the work Tampa 2001 was inspired in the first instance by the Tampa incident in 2001. Uh, probably a lot of people don't recall that incident, but it really was a defining moment in Australian history because it was the first time in a period of about a quarter of a century when uh, refugees on a ship fleeing persecution were actually blocked from entering Australia. And I thought that was a really important moment to think about and reflect on uh, for this prize. And the second reason, um, the second motivation really was I'm working on a series about the concept of doors. And it's inspired by an essay that was written by Roger Paul Duart, who's a French philosopher. But I've also been very interested in doors myself personally because doors are very unusual in that they are common not only to human society but also to non-human society or the natural world. Spiders have doors but the planet also has a door. It has a huge vaporous membrane which protects the planet against ultraviolet radiation and the sun's rays. So I'm working on a series to do with different types of doors, doors in the natural world and doors in the human world. And coming back to Tampa 2001, Tampa is a really interesting example of a door that surrounds Australia, the vast oceanic belt that um, in a way protects us and nurtures us. But it's been used both to protect but also in a way to uh, keep out uh, people fleeing uh, persecution now anyway. That's what the ocean is being used for. It's being used as a protective immunological membrane to keep Australia safe. But the irony is that the dangers that Australia faces aren't so much dangers to do with refugees but more to do with changes in the climate. And so the oceans themselves are suffering from ocean warming and we saw the recent incident of the cyclone that hit um, Vanuatu which they're now thinking of categorising as a a six category cyclone which is um, unprecedented and these sorts of changes that are happening in uh, the waters that surround us I thought was a very interesting point to look back at Tampa and uh, these attempts by Australia to keep out what it saw as foreign bodies and um, the other irony of course with Tampa 2001 is those people fleeing persecution were Afghani refugees who um, are now the people we're trying to help. Um, so we were keeping them out in 2001 and now we're sending our own uh, men and women over to fight for them and protect them in their own country. So there's a lot of complexity um, around that issue of Tampa, but I like the idea of looking at the notion of doors because it connects us not only with people in other countries, in Afghanistan, but it also makes the connection between the waters that surround us and the rest of the planet. So doors have this ability to work uh, in lots of different ways. They work both in a physical sense, you open a door and you close it, but you also open uh, a door into another experience and close yourself off to other experiences. So I wanted to look at um, Tampa 2001 as a way of exploring this new notion of door, in other words, a, a place of oceanic depth but also as a place um, where a country tries to define itself by what it keeps outside of itself. So with this particular piece I'm trying to put people inside the experience of being on the deep ocean so rather than um, Tampa, the incident, Tampa incident when a Norwegian freighter was trying to bring shipwrecked um, refugees to Australia rather than looking at that as a news event, as a topical news event and political event that it became, I want the viewers actually to be inside that experience. So in a way I've recreated the oceanic ambience, if you like, put uh, the viewer inside what it must felt like to be on the, the high ocean uh, adrift, not knowing where you're going, certain of where you're fleeing from, but really not having a clear destination in mind. So I wanted the viewer to have that sort of experience without prejudging whether the um, the destination or the, the source were at fault, but rather give uh, the viewer a sense of the, the, the experience in a very visceral sense, but also in an imaginative sense, because I believe that art has a very real value in our society in being able to put us in touch with very raw and direct visceral feelings uh, in ways that uh, other types of um, 
representation, other types of um, ways of talking about things or imagining things can't. Art has a capacity to be a lot more direct, immediate and visceral. So I've created a computer program uh, simulation of the deep ocean which tries to give a sense of the ocean as both a door but as this very profound depth of, um, of activity that is both nurturing but also can be terrifying. So the main technique we've used is we're projecting onto the floor and we're using a circular screen. It's a black screen. So it's similar to a previous work that I did about doors, which was looking at the outer layers of the atmosphere. In this work, I'm looking at the ocean and I'm trying to recreate through the projection onto the floor, the sense of being in a porthole, looking down through the porthole onto the ocean. And the ocean, of course, is circular, it's planetary. Um, so I try to retra retain that form, or that shape of being on the ocean, being on a ship looking at the ocean, and typically you look at the ocean through a porthole. So I've tried to retain that, that sense. And then the imagery itself is using a 3D simulation computer program that is simulating uh, different types of intensity of ocean waves. And this sound is a 12-channel sound that's mixed down to recreate some of the things that you may hear on the ocean, but also to evoke the sensation of being uh, adrift on the ocean. Um, so the innovation was really looking at how to synchronise the computer visual simulation with some of the acoustic um, uh, soundscape that was created. So there's a bit of simulation occurring. Unfortunately, it wasn't as much as I would have liked because we're using wireless headphones, but it still gives you some sort of um, soundscape that gives you that um, rather innovative understanding of being adrift on the ocean.